We want you to be our juror number 13th and vote on questions relating to our trial every day. Today, do you think the manicurist who testified yesterday, Dina Perry, helped the prosecution to vote? Log on to the website, www.courttv.com. We keep a running tally of your votes. We update you all day long on the results. Stay with us. We'll be right back. on crime stories. If I had to live my life over again, I would never do it. Prostitution is what we do. All we see is a dollar sign. Women would not be on that corner if men weren't looking to buy sex. They don't want government in their bedroom. I don't think it's a crime in my case because I choose to do it and I'm happy with it. Sex for sale on Anatomy of Crime. Tonight at 10, only on Court TV. Here comes allergy relief for red, itchy eyes no ordinary eye drop can deliver. More effective, more powerful relief. New Visine A. It has a powerful antihistamine. Ordinary eye drops don't. So it blocks the irritation, stops the itch, even on the worst pollen days. Suffer no more. Get the antihistamine relief of Visine A. It gets the itch out. Tired of unattractive bumps, embarrassing poaches? Say goodbye to them forever. Introducing Easy Shape Miracle Hose, Body Shaper, and Panty Hose all in one. Sculpt your hips, tummy, and thighs instantly. Drop an entire pant size in seconds. The front panel flattens. The diagonal support bands lift, while the compression bands slim. Miracle Hose shape my body and make me feel fantastic. Feel fabulous and drop one full pant size instantly. Say goodbye to bulges. Get Easy Shape Miracle Hose, the body shaper and panty hose all in one. Available now for a limited time for just $19.95. And guaranteed for 30 days or we refund the purchase price. And watch this. You can't do this with ordinary panty hose, but Easy Shape Miracle Hose just refuse to run. They reshape your hips, your tummy, and your thighs instantly. Call now and get your fifth pair absolutely free. Easy Shape Miracle Miracle Hose, Body Shaper, and Patty Hose, all in one. Call right now. Call 1-800-370-0880. That's 1-800-370-0880. Call now. Ah, the status that comes with a gold card. Now, it's not just reserved for the privileged few. Hello, and welcome to flight 163. We'd like to start by boarding our valued economy class passengers first. Introducing the Visa Gold Card from Capital One. The one gold card for everyone. Call Capital One at 1-800-227-7732 to get yours today. Because now, you're eligible for gold status, even if you weren't in the past. Call Capital One at 1-800-227-7732. Get all the benefits of a gold card, like extended warranty protection, even travel and emergency assistance, with no application fee or hidden charges. Mm, this is good. It's time to go gold. Call 1-800-227-7732 to get your Capital One Gold Card now. Welcome back to Court TV on this Thursday morning. I'm Nancy Grace. Thanks for being with me. We are bringing you a trial from Las Vegas, uh, the gambling capital of the world, that has stumped many legal scholars. We've had one legal issue after the next that has caused rounds and rounds of argument in the courtroom. But bottom line, Sandy Murphy, a former beauty queen who ended up working in a strip bar in Las Vegas, wound up dating one of the wealthiest heirs to the casino empire, Binion's Horseshoe, in the world. But now she's charged in his murder. 55-year-old Ted Binion was found dead in his own home, and at first it was presumed to be a suicide or an accidental drug overdose. But then Binion's sister became suspicious, and Sandy Murphy and her other boyfriend, Rick Tavish, are now on trial for his murder. 
Well, they say no way that he was a junkie, according to them, and it was a simple overdose. We're taking a look at testimony you have not seen yet. Here is Terrence Sweeney. Now, you recall yesterday, Kurt Grotz, or witness for the state, dropped a bombshell in that courtroom like no other when he testified under oath to the jury that Tabish had tried to contract with him to kill Ted Binion, even describing a mode of death a forced ingestion of heroin. Well now, more along the same vein from an acquaintance of Grotzer's, here is Terrence Sweeney. Uh, do you know Rick Tabish? Uh, no, not personally. Uh, have you ever met Richard Tabish? No, I have not. Uh, how long was your conversation with Mr. Grotzer about around the uh, YMCA? A good 15 minutes at least. Yes. Uh, did the two of you make any plans to get together later? Well, uh, as the, yes, as the uh, conversation wore on, we uh, it knew that we had known several people in common and that sort of thing, and uh, he asked me what I was doing that weekend. And I said I was heading up to a, uh, an event called the Testicle Festival uh, the following day. Why don't you explain to us what that festival is? Well, uh, it's an annual event that is held up at Rock Creek, which is about 40 miles <coughs> east of Missoula. And, uh... Is that a city? It's... It, uh, no. Rock Creek is not really a city. It's... It does have a few buildings, and the main one being a large... Oh, uh... They have a casino and a bar and a gift shop, and, uh, kind of a... The one spot there in town, really. And this is their big annual event that they have for about four or five days up there. Had you been there before? No, not for the festival. Okay. Um, you had plans to go to the festival? I did. I uh, had planned to meet a couple of my friends up there the following day on Saturday. Uh, they both had uh, commitments to work on Saturday morning and weren't able to go up on Friday. Uh, were you going to get a room at this casino? No, no. Um, um, my brother and I, we own a, uh, uh, an older motorhome, a 1976 Holiday Rambler that I was planning on going up in. Okay. And you were going to stay in the motorhome? Yes. Uh, when was the next time after the conversation at the YMCA that you saw Kurt Grazza? Well, um... What had occurred was he, he said that he would be interested in going to the festival. And he said, and I thought, well, you know, I really wanted to go up on Friday, but I couldn't. And he goes, well, why don't we go up? And I thought, well, why not? You know, I mean, I said I could give him a ride up there, and uh, at least he would have a place to stay, you know, Friday night. I couldn't guarantee him anything for Saturday. <coughs> so we made arrangements um, that we would leave Missoula later that night. And we took off about 8 p.m. And how long is that drive? I'd say about an hour. In a 1970s? In, in a Rambler, yeah. In an older motorhome. Uh, <coughs> did you have uh, conversations with Kurt Grotzer on the way to, is it Rock Creek? Rock Creek. Rock Creek? Yeah, we sure did. Um, the conversation was, had a lot to do with people that we knew when we were going to college, that sort of thing, and uh, a big topic of conversation was um, was uh, Rick Tabish due to the fact that he had worked for him and that um, Kurt Grotzer had worked for him? Yes. Okay. Uh, had you heard of Rick Tabish at that point? Yes, I had heard of him. Okay. Um, I want to, I guess once you got there about, I guess it would be 9 p.m.? Yes, yes, somewhere in that range. What did you and Mr. Grotzer do? Um, we basically went and joined to see where the festivities were. We followed where the music was and there was an outdoor band and that sort of thing. Is this festival in a, in a building? It's kind of 
A lot of it is outdoor activities and inside the bar area, that sort of thing. You know, it uh, almost has a street dance atmosphere to it. It was live music? There was live music. Uh, did you spend that evening with Kirk Kratzer? Yes, I had told him that he could stay there and the sleep on the sleeper in the... or I was in the sleeper and he was on the couch in the motorhome. There you see on the stand Terrence Sweeney. He's a friend of Kirk Grotzer, and Kirk Grotzer was a bombshell witness yesterday for the state. Grotzer got on the stand and told the jury that he recalls Rick Tabish trying to contract with him to do in to kill Ted Binion. Now, as you know, joining us today, a special guest, Wendeen Eolis. And Wendeen, you are the world champ, were the world champ, record player in poker, and are very familiar with the business there in Las Vegas. It seems to me that there is a, a, a type of a subculture of the casino owners. Now, if one walked in front of me, I may not know who they were, but for regulars there, for Las Vegas residents, they're almost like the crown princes of Vegas. Uh, they're celebrities in their own right. What type of world do these casino owners live in? Well, the casino owners clearly have enormous clout in Las Vegas, and they make or break the gambler's experience by the direction they give to the people who work as the executive hosts and directors, as well as all of the people who are in the operation. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the, the casino owners differ, however, in terms of the structure of the casinos. Some are corporate entities uh, going way back to the early 70s, mm -hmm. and uh, most are, in fact, public companies today. Binion's Horseshoe, as an example, is probably um, my very most favorite uh, family-owned casino and uh, place in which to play poker at the World Series of Poker, where I see um, one big difference, which is um, you can see those family members on the floor with their yeah. guests and they're very much still connected, always were. Um, you would see Jack Binion uh, on the floor when he was at Binion's Horseshoe in Las Vegas, and uh, you will see that they have a very close relationship with their serious gamblers, and also with the rest of their guests. Well, Wendine, why did that make a difference to you? And um, you've been in all of the casinos, you've, you've done the Las Vegas scene, you're intimately familiar with the business itself, the technique of the game. Why is why does it make a difference that the Binions would be walking those casino floors every night? Well, I think for serious gamblers, particularly in the poker world, um, being treated well is very much appreciated. And Benny Binion, uh, back in 1986, which was my first experience, was very much present. Um, not just at the World Series of Poker, but in the poker world. He really is, um, as I guess Jim Albrecht, who has been or was the uh, tournament director for the World Series of Poker, said to me once, um, Benny Binion was the gambler's best friend. And that extended, I think, far beyond just poker, but to all of the gambling experiences and the adventure of gambling that customers have um, as part of their entertainment. Uh, but in terms of poker, First Benny and then Jack Binion, who took over the management uh, of the hotel, I believe, in 89, mm -hmm. shortly after his death. And Becky Binion also, who um, last year uh, had the responsibility and embraced the World Series of Poker, showed that she liked it, was committed to it, and in fact, on her watch, had the single largest final championship event. Wow. And that gives me a moment to tell you, Nancy, and make sure that our viewing public knows that um, as, as proud as I am of that finish and the money that I had in 1986, um, I am really not a world champion. Um, poker is a hobby for me. For many others, it is the most serious pursuit yeah. in their lives, and we have wonderful world champions. Poker players as a, group, do, yeah. as a group are a very smart group of people. Well, they've got to be. They've got to be <coughs> in order to keep all of those... Uh, the, the facts of what cards have been played and so forth in their mind. Very, very difficult game to win, especially at the world-class level in which you've been, and of course, <laughs> not to mention the world champions as well. 
Everyone, we are taking a quick break, and the moment that live coverage begins, we will take you in live. I want to remind you also, you can follow live coverage of another case, a civil suit brought against the state of Ohio by the son of Dr. Sam Shepard on Court TV's website. You log on to www.courttv.com for testimony from 9.30 to 5 Eastern, as well as finding profiles of major players in the trial, a timeline, and news stories. Stay with us. We'll be right back.